Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the nerd Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello, nerds. You're listening to an episode on the Nerdcore podcast feed. If you're feeling generous, please consider pledging to a tier on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the nerd We have tiers as low as $1 per month. Thanks so much, and enjoy the episode. Hey everyone, before we can get into today's episode, I need to talk to you all about Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast and is the platform I've been using for over two years. Anchor is easy because it's free, includes creation tools on your tablet or phone from the get-go, rewards creators with sponsorships with no minimum listenership, and best of all, they distribute your podcast to places like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and many more. So if you want to make a podcast, you should download the Anchor app or visit anchor.fm. Now let's get into today's episode. All right, it's going to feel really good to say this, but <sighs> welcome back. You're listening to the Nerdcore Podcast, the podcast that reviews the movies and talks that nerd shit. This is episode 299. And it is your final review for Martin Scorsese Film Month as we review 1982's The King of Comedy. As always, it is the nerdy Gigano here to host the show alongside my wonderful co-host, Young Yoda himself, Baby Yoda. How are you doing? Doing well, Raul. Doing well. And no one can blame me for this hiatus. That's all you. Yep, yep. <laughs> so yeah, some of you are some of you who don't follow. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this. Some of y'all who don't follow me on Twitter don't know anything. So, like, what well, you do know if you listen to the last episode, which was uh, the what's it called the Goodfellas review, really good review. Uh, so we're back. Um, this was not a hiatus that I wanted to take, but on the night of um, I don't even remember the day, but it was last Sunday. Um, not not the sun night. Like, what's it called? Not last Sunday, but the the one before last Sunday. I don't remember. Hold on. Um, yeah, hold on. I want. I want to get the actual date for this, man. And, and you just had to do it two episodes before three hundred. You know. I know. Like, like really. On the night of November seventeenth, twenty nineteen, as I was getting ready to, to watch Goodfellas, and uh, to get to get ready for our review after we had finished re- recording our news episode that will never be released ever, ever, ever because it it doesn't exist. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Was a really good news episode. It was. It's gone though. Um, I put my computer on the side of my bed, and apparently, it was uh, too close to the edge, and it's about to break. It needs a little room to break, but it's one step closer to the edge, and it definitely broke when it fell, and the wiring inside the screen was was damaged, and my screen did not want to turn. Did you like that Lincoln Park reference, Brad? Yeah, yeah, I caught it. I caught it. I caught it real good. Needs a little bit of room to break, Brad. So uh, it's and it happened. And I went to Geek Squad the following day after Mr. D- Dylan told me to. And they told me, Raul, we're going to be honest with you. We're, not, we're honest with you, buddy. $86 just to ship this. And then they'll tell you there how much it will cost to, re- to fix this laptop. And I asked them, give or take, tell me how much it would cost. And they said, three hundred fifty to four hundred dollars. And You're I said, like, nope. Fuck no. <laughs> I said, fuck no, man. I can't do that. I can't do that. It's just not. I I don't have that type of money. And uh, with the wonderful help of Sai Lanushi, we were now, able to- now you now you gotta you gotta bring out all of the names for this. Yes. All right. Nushi so, was a big help. Like yeah, she was like the main source of this. But yeah. You guys don't no, imagine hold on. Watching, so, this and watching these people rally around him. So that, that was Ushi, something special. Ushi was a lot of help because she helped us. Uh, Nikki helped us fundraise for this on her stream. And we were taking donations and pledges on the Patreon on our end as well. But uh, I've got the full list of names. I want to read the wonderful people that helped us uh, be able to get a computer. It's not the most amazing computer. It's not a big high-end computer. It's what's going to get the works. job done. It's what's going to get the job done. And I appreciate all the help that you all gave us during this time. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but I want the names here. I want, I, give me your names. <laughs> give me the names. All right, let's see. I want to go ahead and give a big th- thank you to uh, Ninja Flippy, Man Captain Pokey, 
Esports Phoenix, Literally Nico, Emerus, Pages Beaston, Brown Rice 1996, 96, and my cousin Sarah, and our wonderful co host here, Brad, who, uh, who pledged, who, who either donated to Nikki Stream, donated to us, or pledged to the Patreon. All of you are guest producers for the month of December, along with our wonderful, uh, uh, Nikki, who's a wonderful person, who's uh, basically a uh, a member of the Nerdcore by now, you know she's she's, she's basically a co-owner at this point. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Don't give her any ideas. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that we we were able to do that because of her and uh, those wonderful people. Every day you are every day for the month of December, those people's names will be read. Their social media will be read. And that's where you'll be, you're going to be able to follow them because they're amazing guest producers for the whole month of December. Uh, Bryce is our new executive producer at the uh, $25 tier. So congratulations, Bryce. Welcome to the greatest family ever because we are a family here and we take care of each other. And I'm really, really, really happy that you all came out to help us out. I am forever endowed in your debt. And I just want to say it feels fucking great to talk into this microphone right now. Brad, do you have anything to say? Yeah, it got so bad, I, I started to learn to juggle. So thank you guys. I, I appreciate you <laughs> keeping me off that track. Um, I, I was thinking about trying drugs for the first time, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm back. I'm back. Back to podcasting. Oh, my God. Dude, so... Just something uh, to do. I mean... Um, <laughs> dude, I came to a couple of conclusions. Um, A couple of conclusions. I love podcasting so much. And um, this is like this is like a drug apparently because I was like I was having withdrawals like a motherfucker, like you know I was like I I just wanted to get in front of the microphone just to say something you know I can't I was look- literally just looking for shit to do yeah <laughs> I was like I, I started baseball card collecting again I went out I I found Nikes and I sold yeah. those and I, I've I've literally just just been doing random shit this whole time yeah. Um, I started, uh, messaging Brad more often than I usually do. <laughs> just, the, just something to get some form of communication from him, uh, which made me realize this guy is 100% my best friend. I, I, I can't picture myself doing anything else with this, with a, other than this, with this guy. And it, it felt, it felt horrible to not have to be able to talk to him for a whole week. Uh, it's pretty, I mean, we give each other shit, but yeah. I think. I think other than my coworkers and my wife, you're the next person I talk to the most. Pretty and, much. And if you guys could see the messages we were sending back and forth, it was basically just gifts Pretty and much. funny shit we were finding. Yeah. Yeah. And it just the whole time, it's like, you know, I'm like, I just want to talk to him about stuff. We missed on so much news, so much stuff that came out. Well, we're going to pre-tape live show, guys, for uh, for, for the weekend because uh, of Thanksgiving. course Thanksgiving, right? We're going to do a lot of pre-taping this week. Uh, we're doing High Flyer Radio tomorrow, Jabril and I. So I'm glad that we're finally going to be able to do this because we, oh my God, so much stuff. So um, I, I got, I got to ask this though: your computer now, it's definitely an upgrade from what you had, right? I don't. Um, well, yes, because I'm because uh, the streaming might be better on this. We no. might still have a little bit of lag on your end because of just we're using Google Hangouts. But uh, other than that, you know, I think we're pretty much an upgrade here. Uh, yeah. To an extent, I just got to relearn how to use Windows because uh, I was not on Windows before. And uh, the last conclusion, Brad, I think this is the one that I made that I realized uh, after day one. Holy shit that we have boring lives before we did this. <laughs> Holy fuck, man. I swear to God, I thought I was going to have to start learning a new language or something. I was bored. At- I was just I was just posting pics of my dog on Instagram. I, I did all my work for school. I finished it, and I still had nothing else to do. Yep, y'all don't realize this. He graduated early (laughs) in a week. He got all of his work done. (laughs) Pretty much. I only had to finish my script and another paper, and that's it, dude. But, like, holy shit, did we have boring lives before we ever did this, dude. Uh, You you know, I mean, yeah, in in a way. it's. I I think we've come to realize how much we love podcasting. I don't think... Because I know you've always been like, oh, I, I like making movies way more. I think it's like close up there. It's like yeah. if it's second, it's a close second. Yeah, well, because I, I'm just throwing it out there. I can't make a movie every single day, but I can make I can do this every single day. That's why I think it's God forbid it happens. If tomorrow my camera breaks, you know, I feel the same thing. Hold on. Where's the wood? 
knock it on wood, man. Because uh, that's not insured either. So uh, how, the, how the hell are we going to fundraise for that? Yeah, that's eight hundred forty-eight fucking dollars, man. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. You good luck with that one, bro. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, so you know, it's, and, and, and it's just not a good headspace for us. Cause no, man. If we have anything to do, we get in trouble. Like, like we'd be trying to light our farts on fire or something. Yeah, like I, I, I was like, just I'm, I'm in my room, like. I have literally nothing to do. I've rewatched all the movies I can rewatch. What the fuck am I doing, man? I can't do shit. And I just <laughs> having dreams of my computer working and recording. And uh, it's some weird ass shit, man. Like, you know, I'm literally having vivid ass dreams where Jabril and I are recording and the computer works. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And, and just all the episodes we've like the Mandalorian Watchmen this last Watchmen episode and it, uh, and I'm sitting there guys and I'm texting Raul I'm going this is the best episode so far like you this know is how literally hard, the best episode I literally went up to Claire's room and sat there with her just to talk about movies and shit because I was getting tired of not talking about shit with anybody man did, did you just put on headphones and move the mic to you even though it's not plugged in and you just start <laughs> no, talking to no. her <laughs> no but uh, Claire's very happy that she's going to be coming back too because uh, you know we're, we're, we miss this we miss this a lot yes. yeah uh, Claire's getting a microphone by the way because uh, she's, she's graduating in May next year so after that she still wants to be on the show apparently bring her up yeah so I miss this. I miss this a lot, dude. And uh, you know what? I'm. I'm. I. I think the best thing that I we've we've learned out of this, man, is our, we have a fucking amazing community, man. We really do. Well, uh, we have amazing people who are who rally again uh, uh, against uh, against us, who rally with us, and uh, we we are we are what's it called? Apparently, something that you guys enjoy so much that you want to get more and more of it. Apparently, and I, I think it's really great. The community came around and. They, yeah. they may helped us meet our goal. I mean, Bryce becoming a Patreon supporter and Paige, old school Till family, shout out. Damn straight. Um, One of the first listeners of this podcast, by the way. Putting down $50 because she didn't want you to feel bad. I, yeah. I mean, and we know she listens to the podcast oh, too. 100%. But I, that's, that, that's true love right there. Just, yeah. just true, true yeah. heart. Yeah. And I mean, like, just... All the people who were retweeting the tweets and retweeting our or our, our, our looking at our story, you know, just all that stuff. People just just even retweeting was a huge help for us, bro. And then Ushi and the rest coming in in those last five minutes. Oh, like, yeah. I, I went back and I watched those last five minutes of her stream and it goes from like sixty three dollars to like one hundred and sixty. I'm like, God damn. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> donated a hundred fucking dollars. And that's awesome. I love that. I, I love them. And that was a. That was something that we uh thank you, Ember. She was our top Ooh, donor for sure. Uh, she, Ooh, she I don't know who it was, who it was but um, Nikki Nikki is one of the biggest helps we ever got on this podcast, and we thank her so much for what she did. You know, she's gonna we're gonna do another episode, man. Um, there's gonna what's it up, called? Up that, give her a show. <laughs> I'm telling you, Nikki could be the uh, co-host of the live show if she wants it. You know, she can do whatever she wants, and we'll we're gonna do a celebratory stream. You guys unlocked a couple of uh, one goal though. You guys unlocked one goal, and Jesus fucking Christ, we're gonna do it because we love you guys. And, um, yep. All right. So now we're back on track. December we'll have comic book comic book club. We're gonna do uh, and I'm gonna make that first episode free for everybody. By the way, I'm gonna make it free for everybody because I want everybody to listen to it. It'll be free on our Patreon. All you gotta do is just go check it out on there. Okay. And uh, what's it called? We'll do that this month, in December. But we're gonna we're gonna also do. A what's it called? Venom commentary, audio commentary. We're gonna we're gonna pay to watch this movie again, man. I'm kind of excited. Are, are are we doing a live commentary on it? Um, I I guess, but we're we're also gonna record it so we can have it like a audio commentary for the is people. It, is this like is this like a mystery science theater three thousand kind of thing? I don't so we know. Just sit there and razz it. All I know is that I'm not ready to do this, but you guys helped us out, and this is as far as I can give you guys. Uh, we could have we could have unlocked another goal, but it's fine. We didn't, and that's one hundred percent fine. I was kind of I'm kind of happy we did not we did not get one of the stretch goals because I did not want to play a scary game and do that for a rage quit. But uh, <laughs> you know that's because uh, I don't I, like scary I, stuff. I I, I I we still have out there my my thick Thor cosplay. Yeah. By the way, by, yeah. By you, the way, I I have purchased the hoodie and the tunic. So yeah, we we uh we 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 can put like just one more patron. If we get one more patron, we'll do it. Uh, but what's it called? Uh, 
We 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 still we we are still gladly taking uh what's it called donations if you want to throw them our way I'm gonna buy a I have to buy the the what's it called the uh, the 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 warranty for this thing I still have until <laughs> I I have until January fifteenth to get this warranty and uh, yes yes you need that yeah so we will gladly be taking donations for you guys as always streamlabs.com slash nerdcore or patreon.com slash nerdcore. And uh, we'll, we'll what's it called? We're still gladly taking them. If you can, it's fine. If you if you still want to throw something our way, we greatly appreciate it. I'm just happy we're doing this again, man, because I'm really, 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 really fucking missed this. And now, uh, now that we got that out of the way, Bradley, should we f- do it? Shall we go on our way to reviewing this movie? Let's move on to episode 299. All right, let's get ready, folks. As always, if you've never watched The King of Comedy, this is your time to get out of this episode because we're going to be talking spoilers. And I recommend you all do it because it is a movie that needs to be seen, especially if you enjoyed The uh, Joker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so with that being said, if you, I don't have my sound bites on my stream deck because new computer, new things, right? What's it called? But I'll do the noise. I go, hee, hee, hee. So at the at the sound of that, when you after one, that means what one is in effect. So let's go ahead and do this in a five. Uh, uh, although, although, Raul, before you do that, I think you need to change your spoiler warning sound now to Ushi crying. I think that has to be the sound. Now. Yeah. Well, once I load it onto my uh, my what's it called uh, my uh, my stream deck here, because I still have a lot of files that are not on my computer yet, uh, but it will it will soon be there. Uh, so. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this in a five, four, three, two, one. Ah! I, I'll, I'll try to imitate it. From our wonderful Wikipedia, as always, right? Uh, night, the, the King of Comedy is a 1983 American satirical black comedy film directed by Martin Scorsese and starring Robert De Niro, Jerry Lewis, and Sandra Bernhard. Written by Paul D. Zimmerman. And the film focuses on themes of inclu- of themes. It focuses on themes including celebrity worship and American media culture. 20th Century Fox released the picture on February 18, 1983 in the United States, though the film was released two months earlier in Iceland. Um, So the production began in New York on June 1st, 1981 to avoid clashing with a forthcoming writer's strike and opened the Cannes Film Festival in 1983. The film opened to positive reviews from critics, but was a flop at the box office grossing only $2.5 million against its $19 million budget. Wow. Yeah, the movie is an hour and 49 minutes, and... It is the shortest Scorsese movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of his early work is kind of short. I'm guessing that they didn't let him get away with a lot of the... <laughs> what's it called? Uh, uh, Maybe long... they should have kept doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's great, man. That's great. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and get some initial thoughts here. This was my pick. It's my second pick. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> go ahead and talk but, about this. Uh, although you hadn't seen this before, correct? Never seen this before. Never seen this before. I was told to watch this because I really like Joker, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so I want to say that this is definitely one of Scorsese's uh, more, gr- more, very gr- more grounded work. It's also Scorsese very out of his element because this is not a crime film. This is hell. I wouldn't even call this, a, you know, a drama for most of the time. This is a fucking black comedy, one hundred percent. It's a black comedy. It's but it's it's a very it's a psychological thriller as well. But we see him kind of perfect the psychological thriller when he gets to Shutter Island, really. And but I think that this also shows the versatility of 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 Martin Scorsese when he was starting out to make movies because this is what his fourth film or fifth one, and it really shows uh, just how competent of a director he is and just how he how great he is along with Robert De Niro to create these incredible characters that you just like that they, they just blow your mind and really apparently blow the mind of other directors enough to take. Uh, to take what's it called some influence from to create even the modern films we see these days. Right. I, I think I, I think it might be an hey Tony. I, I think I might be agreeing with Anthony on this. Anthony is I, I think or Antonio or <laughs> Antonio, Antonio bro Antonio Antonio Anthony Tony whatever whatever with you. <laughs> Fucking, we're first back, y'all. Already busting my balls. Busting yeah, my balls. Yeah. But I can see 
where Joker is basically basically king of comedy mashed with Taxi Driver. Like you see, like you, I literally see it. I mean, so mm-hmm. I'm going to call it out more than a bit of an influence. I I want to. I think it's an homage, bro. I honestly think it's an homage. I don't think it's him copying it. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say straight up copy. You, because there aren't just straight up scenes where he just copies it like that. Man, because he he takes it a little step further in Joker. Yeah, Todd Phillips does. I, like yeah. like because De Niro doesn't. We already did the spoiler alert, so I can go. Yeah. ahead. De Niro mm-hmm. doesn't go ahead and kill Jerry Lewis's character. No, he does not. No, so I mean, Scorsese like stopped short of that. What you want to expect from a Scorsese, mm-hmm. where Phillips just went full force and just shot De Niro in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where this is where I tend to disagree with uh, Tony because I think that Arthur Fleck is very different from Rupert and from uh, from Travis. So if we go back to, to Taxi Driver, uh, nineteen seventy two, I believe that that's the right date. Um, he does he kills pimps, child molesters, and politicians while. Arthur kills just regular people and one guy that made fun of him on a TV and Wall Street I, people I, I, and Wall Street people. I, I, I think Arthur Fleck definitely, I, I mean, Travis and Taxi Driver definitely mental in a way, yeah. like like some searing rage in him, I would say. Yeah. But, I, but Joker is on another level of not only is there rage, but there's depression, there's post-traumatic stress disorder, there's mm-hmm. a whole whole lot of effects going on yeah. in Joker. Yeah, where which I think that Rupert Rupert has some of that too. I think he has PTSD because you know as well that his father, his, his parents were abusive and you know didn't give a shit about him. And but I think that he's very different from Rupert as well because Rupert I don't think Arthur Fleck is ever obsessed with Mari. Mari. I, I, I think don't that know. Rupert, in some instances it kind of seems that way. I think like, that, like he wants he wants Maury to be like his best friend, basically. I, I think that Arthur just wants to be seen. I think Arthur wants to be seen by somebody. And where I think Rupert is I think Rupert is straight up obsessed with with uh with uh Jerry. Jerry uh, and then and then Sandra Bernhardt's character as well. I yes. think we gotta throw her in there because you get these two obsessions and they come together in order to kidnap their obsession. And yeah. You know, I just realized, like, when I saw her on screen, I'm like, that's Sandra Bernard. And I realized I haven't seen Sandra Bernard in a, anything in quite a while. Ooh, such a long fucking time, dude. I swear. It's been a while. <laughs> I was like, wait, when was the last time I saw you on screen? I was like, why do you seem so familiar? <laughs> yeah, like, like I, I, I remember her on something, but it's been quite a long time. Yeah. So, but, like, I think that for you to straight up not agree that, that Joker is an homage or some a blend of Taxi Driver and King Kong, I think it's just, just be ignorant. I, I think it's true. I think that it takes bits and pieces from both of those films. But I think but that— But does, does it just straight up copy them? No. No, no. I, no, I, I no. would say that there's stuff that's very similar. I don't think it's straight yeah. up copying. I think it's very similar, but Phillips goes ahead and just goes the extra mile past what Scorsese, where Scorsese yeah. stopped. Yeah. Like— he went uber violent compared yeah. to Scorsese. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. A, I, I, yeah. I mean, even Taxi Driver, which has that violent ending, mm-hmm. to me, Joker was far more violent in. Wow, its hot take. viewing than yeah. Taxi Driver. Talking about hot take here. Wow, starting off the starting it off here. Uh, Brad thinks that Joker is more violent than Taxi Driver. I, I, I mean, mean did, did Taxi Driver have him stabbing someone in the fucking head? Definitely like, not. Yeah, I mean that's some that's a conversation we can have later because I have not rewatched Taxi Driver in a while, even though I probably watched that movie like fucking four times. We but, reviewed uh, that like last year. Last year, you sure? I think that was on our first year. Oh yeah, we've only year? been doing this for two years. <laughs> How many fucking years? Have we been doing? Yeah, we just, yeah, it was last year. So uh, what's <laughs> what it called? Years? La- phase phase. How long have we been off the air? <laughs> How long? Yeah, I, I Robert De Niro does an amazing job in this movie, by the way. I'm it. I I don't I Brad would it be crazy to say that Robert De Niro is one of the top ten greatest I, hell top five greatest American actors of all time? I don't think that's crazy to say. I think you'd get some pushback just because there's a shit ton of actors. But if you want to go and say 
that Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro are the quintessential director actor pairing. Yeah. Like you have with Kurosawa. Mifune. And Mifune. Like like that. Then I would agree with you. They're yeah. probably they're probably up there in the top director actor pairings. Yeah, because no movie that they've done together has ever been bad. You know, no, you look I, at I the mean, same because thing. I think mm-hmm. I think De Niro knows what Scorsese wants and Scorsese knows how to tell De Niro to yeah. do something. You look at Kurosawa and Mufune as well. No movie the movie they've done has never been bad. Look mm-hmm. at the same thing. Fellini and, and my, uh, Federico Fellini and Marcello Mastroianni. The, no movie they've done is bad. You bless, know, you. bless you. Bless <laughs> you. Marcello Mastroianni. That's one thing. Uh but yeah. You know, it's 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 incredible, dude. You look at these people who you look at these two who when they work together, they make something that's really special, and it's 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 incredible. I can't wait to watch the, the the Irishman. I'm I'm so excited for all three hours and thirty minutes of that movie. I'm excited for that because I think that, and see, I'm more of a Scorsese lover. I I don't mind him going out of the box. This is an out of the box movie for him to me. Just mm-hmm. like the Last Temptation of Christ was, mm-hmm. but those aren't my favorite. My favorite have always been Scorsese when he does his yeah. gangster movie. Yeah, and That's I think just... what I wanted to kid on this month is is that it's not bad to only like his uh, gangster stuff. But we and also have to. I, I don't like. Yeah. I don't like these. It's just I have to say I think Scorsese's at his best when he has De Niro and Pesci on screen, fucking just hamming it up. I mean. Yeah. That is fun to watch every time. Like you said, Goodfellas. Goodfellas, we, we kind of could watch like every week and probably never get, never get tired of it. Pretty much, yeah. I, I'm i telling you, I have to get that three-pack. Uh, I believe it's The Aviator, Goodfellas, and The Departed. Uh, by the way, we're going to do The Departed for Patreon. Uh, we got to do that. Yeah, we'll do that next week, though, because we're definitely not going to have time this week to do it because I'm getting out of this place I'm, on Wednesday. We, we, we can't put the computer to too much use. Burn <laughs> it out. Yeah, uh, but what's it called? I, 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 you know, I, I respect your opinion, Brad. I respectfully disagree because I think that I think when he when he's out of his element and when I think when he's not in his when he's when he's in his element and his niche, uh, not his niche, uh, where he's in his uh, forte. You know, I think he does great, but I also think he does really great when he's not in his forte either. When he does films like Last Temptation of Christ, when he does King of Comedies, when he does Wolf of Wall Streets. You know, and you know, and I'm not saying any of those are bad movies. Yeah, of I course, of course. Scorsese, I don't think Scorsese. Scorsese is kind of like Tarantino. They don't really make bad movies. I don't think they know the they definition some, of a bad they movie. They make some that are different, and some that I. It, it's kind of like how we are with like, well, we know Jackie Brown isn't the top of her Tarantino yeah. list because it's a lot slower. That's just how I feel. Is sometimes I feel like you know, Last Temptation of Christ to me was slower than say Goodfellas. Oh which, yeah. Let's, let's face it, many movies are fucking slower than Goodfellas. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's just, I don't, uh, what's it called? There's just work of theirs that doesn't, you know, hold the spot with all the other ones. But this one really surprised me of how good it was and uh, how it always just kept on beat, right? It, it never really slipped through the cracks. It never really lost its pace. Sometimes I felt like they were just rehashing it, the same thing over like, yeah. I didn't need to see him sitting in his office, like, two or three times. I kind of got it. He was just obsessed. <laughs> yeah. There, there I, were yeah. instances like that. But well, I guess... the, pacing, the pacing wasn't bad because somebody edited it down to, like, less than two hours. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but, like, part of me thinks that, you know, that was also to remind us, like, this guy's Ben's Leo. Does he, is he really... What's it called? Oh, I, I got the whole mental yeah. illness part when he just burst into the dude's house. Oh yeah, <laughs> with a date. Yeah, and like, the date is just like the uh, fuck. By the way, <laughs> we never get a what's it called an answer of what she did with that thing that she stole from uh, from uh, from uh, Jerry. It, it don't matter. It don't matter. She either kept it or she sold it. She probably sold it, bro. But I yeah, I just love how she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Wow, she's fucking stealing something from him. I'm, I mean, I mean, if you're getting dragged around by a madman. And you get to meet a famous guy, and he's got just random shit just sitting there that's probably worth more than your rent. Probably Man, worth it, yeah. I, I can see the temptation. <laughs> the last temptation of Rita. <laughs> 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 oh, I loved Rita. She was cute. Uh, what's it called? Uh, the, that was funny, though. That, and I think that's where the whole instance of like comedy in, his, in Scorsese's uh, pocket is just incredible. I, I love those beats and those parts where it just... It the the what's it called the um 
the delivery time was really great when when he was doing the the stand up comedy bit, and uh, it was just it was funny, man. I, like I just love the way that Scorsese you know, creates these. And, and he it was like they made that comedy like his stand up wasn't supposed to be good technically, no. but I thought his stand up was way better than a lot of other fucking stand up. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I, there was that, like that first one's like uh, what's it called? Uh, I'm from Clifton, New Jersey. Before it was considered a felony, uh, and I was like, uh, I was like, okay, that's kind of fucking funny, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, that's kind of funny. Or what's uh, um? But I think that it's that he's that this is um this is one of my favorites of uh of Scorsese. It's up there. It's not better than it's not better than uh than 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 Casino. I think that this is the one that I'm gonna rank the lowest. But, but, I, but I gotta I gotta bring this out though because we haven't touched on it yet. The ending, oh, I yeah. think the ending is one of the best and most memorable mm-hmm. in Scorsese's films, just because it, it's it's kind of like um oh what's it's it's kind of like Taxi Driver. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of like Taxi Driver yeah. where you're left with is this really happening or is this all in his head? Yeah. I love I love it when he does that. I love when he does these very simple but very effective endings, you know. And uh, what's it called? I I that's it's just it's just something simple as this guy getting getting famous. It's something that we think is possible in this world because a lot of people believe that the reason some of these school shooters school shootings still happen, and I'm I'm opening this kind of worm, is because the media shows them. Yeah. It shows them. So it, it shows it, the names over and over. It shows and, you, yeah, makes the killers famous. I'm not taking a side on that, and I'm not going to because you know that's a that's a Patreon talk because you got to pay for that for me to get into controversial or, talk. Or we'll go on the ladies' nerdcores and yeah, probably the adults yeah. for once. The adults for once, yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for ladies and nerdcore for holding down the feed for this week. Uh, you guys are freaking awesome. We love you guys. But it's, but, it, but I, I just got just the way because. The way that the set look and everything, the curtains look like, you know, jail, like bars in a jail. Yes. And the suit was red or orange. Mm-hmm. And the rest of it, like, it was red or orange, like he's wearing a jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you're left there going, he's still in jail. He never got famous. Mm-hmm. He never got famous. He never got famous. But in his mind, he believes he did. And it's just, it's, it's incredible, dude. I, I think that this, it's, he, this is where Scorsese's endings are like some of the best where it's like, it's not this extravagant, like Kumbaya where it's big and extravagant, right? It's these small, simple endings that leave the viewer like, huh? You, and it just leaves you questioning. Like, yeah. Like question. Like, like th- is okay. this really happening? I don't think this is really happening. No, I don't think so. Either. I think it's the same thing like like taxi driver. Taxi driver. I think I think I think Travis Travis died. I think Travis mm-hmm. what's it called? Travis what's it called? Uh, went to jail for a very long time and in his head he believes he's the the hero. Just like in this one, he what's it called? Rupert thinks that he became famous and he became the 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 uh, what's King it called? Comedy. King of comedy, which he did not. To me, we will never know because there is no actual proof or from spoken word from the director that that's what was intended with the ending. We will never know, just like we will never know if the ending of Joker was the real or the fake. It was real or fake. And I, and I think that those are interesting conversations that we get to have when we discuss film is when so, when we when we bo- when we border the lines of whether this was real to the character or was it fake to the character. And I think some movies are best when interpretation is left. Yeah. Exactly. And, it, and you 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 don't know. Yeah. And I think that's something really weird in this day and age with this, our cell phones, like mm-hmm. our supercomputers in our pocket, which yeah. can tell us right away about everything to be left wondering. Yeah. Just like the, the note in Babel, the, that, the, the, that the daughter gives to the policeman. We never know what that note says. We, yeah. we never know. And we have no idea what it said. And I've, you know, part of me wishes that we never, we, 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 we never find out what it said. And I don't think we'll ever find out because Alejandro, Alejandro never talks to the fucking press. He's like, he's pretty much like, ah, I'm just doing shit in con, whatever. What's in the box? What's in the box, yeah. He's like, he's just like, whatever. Oh, we we found out about that one though. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, good <laughs> lord, we knew what. We, yeah, we found out about what's that. What's in the fucking box? What's in the box. It's a fucking head. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what's it called, uh, Brad? Let's go ahead and get into our final thoughts. Well, let's go ahead and get the scoring because I feel like we've already talked about score. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get my score here. I I like I said, I this is not this is my lowest rating. 
because it's not the best one from Scorsese, but it but is it, one of it, his it's, most it's, interesting it's, work. It's definitely a watch. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So when I measure these up to all the films that we watched this week, I just can't. I can't, I can't put it above them. So I'm going to go ahead and give uh, The King of Comedy an 8.25 out of 10. It's one. It's a 0.25 below Casino because I just liked Casino a whole lot more. But this one is just an interesting one. This one and Goodfellas are ones that I rewatch again. I, I think Goodfellas I could just watch on yeah, pretty much every week <laughs> in the yeah. background. But just... this one is definitely one that right after I was like, Oh, okay, give myself a little couple of hours to let it sit. I want to rewatch it again just so I could capture those, like, just to watch Robert De Niro doing this performance because just the way he walks around the room and the way he talks is just fucking incredible. Yeah, uh, De Niro's performance in this is it's amazing. I, I, I was, but then again, Goodfellas, he was amazing. Casino, he was amazing. Um, I don't think, like I said, Scorsese and De Niro don't make a bad. <laughs> Never. They don't. They don't know the definition of a bad movie. No, it's Kurosawa and Mifuni, basically, to me. Pretty much, it's a what's it called? It's it's in, uh, we're we're st- we're not done with with ter- with Scorsese. We're gonna get to do the Irishman next week because it will finally be out and we'll be able to take more than two days to finish watching it because that's a fucking long ass movie. <laughs> and uh, and we'll do the Departed next week for you guys on the Patreon. But I'm for so now, excited. so excited! So uh, excited! I still haven't given my score though. Oh, I'm sorry, Brad. Go ahead and go. Um. I'm going to be a little above you in this because I think my scores are a little above 8.5. All right, cool, man. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it was a really good, it was a good movie, man. I can't, I can't, I, I, I love Scorsese. And I guess that that's the one thing I want to say before, we, when we formally fi- uh, finish this month, but when we officially finish the month, I'll go ahead and give more insight to it. But I, I do believe for him, I do believe to, for him to be the uh, t- one of the top ten uh, directors of all time, I I truly believe it, man. I I think that Scorsese is just one of the greatest talents to ever happen. Definitely one of the most memorable, at least. Yes, sir. Whether you love him or hate him, especially after those Marvel comments, some of y'all just hate the guy. All right, so let's go ahead and get into housekeeping. I don't have my 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 um my paper in front of me. But I'm just going to do uh, the shout-outs because I got to do those, right? Um, so, uh, what gets it called? Uh, we're going to go ahead and do our executive produ- our, our associate producers, Cassie and Sarah. Thank you so much. And uh, our executive producers of the podcast, we have Grayson Barker 98 What are him at 98 on Twitter? So, Grayson Barker 98 is from Instagram. Grayson, thank you so much for being a, a $15 tier uh, patron and above of the uh, Nerd Court. You are an executive producer because of that. Also, thank you to Shane. Brad, where can they find Shane? They can follow our friend Shane at twitch.tv slash SWRKK or at SWRKK Twitch on Twitter. Cool. And our new executive producer, Brown Rice 1996-96. Thank you, Bryce, you're for being boy, an executive producer. You're, you're a boy, Bryce. Thank you so much for being an executive producer of the podcast. We really do appreciate it. He apparently wants to review the aristocrats. So that will happen for, with you guys, for you guys next month as well. I- I heard on Disney Plus that has a warning in front of it. Oh, good lord! I can't wait to talk about that. <laughs> that, that yeah, it has a warning that it might not be politically correct. I I I don't think I've ever seen the Aristocats. I don't remember. Yeah, there's there's one character who has not held up through time. <laughs> oh, Walt! <laughs> you you fucking anti-Semite! You goddamn racist! Yeah, <laughs> fucking Walt. Um. So if you would like to help us out by joining our Patreon, as always, you can go to www.patreon.com slash nerdcore. And also rate and review the podcast on your podcast app of choice. It really does help the feed grow. But I want to go ahead and hit a little bit of people here and do it one more time. Let's go. Shout out to our guest producers of the podcast. As always, we want to go ahead and extend our love and support to Ninja Flippy on Twitter, Man, Camp, Man Captain Pokey on Twitter, Esports Phoenix on Twitter, literally Nico Emerus, Pages Beasting on Twitter, Brown Rice 1996.96 on Twitter, and Sarah Sarah M with two A's and two a, two M's, but it's E M M. Thank you all for being guest producers of the podcast. You guys are getting a little bit of an early shout out because we're gonna be you're gonna be guest producers of the podcast all December. So thank you all so much for pledging or helping donate to our cause here, and we love you all so much. 
Um, also, make sure that you check out the website nerdcore.com. I'm gonna be start. Do- I'm gonna start doing a director spotlights post to a company the month. So I'm gonna. I'm working on a Martin Scorsese post, and uh, it's just gonna be talking about a little bit about his career, the movies that we reviewed, and some of the ones we didn't get the chance to review, and some of nice. the ones we like. So we're gonna. I'm gonna do one of those posts. I'm working on it right now. And uh, we're going to do that to accompany the month of uh, the month of filmmakers. So Andre Tarkovsky will be the next one. And the picks are going to be hard to uh, – this time we might have an episode that does not have the picks. But don't worry. We're going to come back next month with our – starting our Tarkovsky month here. But we're going to find out how we're going to organize this with uh, Aiden. It's going to be behind the scenes. We'll actually not have a recorded uh, picks being happening. But don't worry. We're going to do it across, behind the scenes. So um, – I believe that's it. Nerco.com website, uh, YouTube. Go check out our podcast and movie reviews. The the next review that's coming in is the farewell. I owe you that is that one. Just that I didn't get to to film it because of the laptop breaking. I wasn't gonna be able to edit it, so I was like, why why film it? You know. <laughs> so now that it's fixed, I get to do it now. So uh, thank you all so much for listening. As always, this has been your nerd Chicano. I'm signing off, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of the Nerdcore Podcast. Brad, send him into the podcast, boy. Thank you, Dixie. <laughs> thank you, Dixie. Anyways, thank you, Raul, for being a host as always. Thank you to all our continuous listeners. Thank you for sticking through with us through this hard time, <laughs> this difficult time where I learned to juggle and sew and drink. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to all our Patreon supporters. You are truly great. And I guess to end this off, I will just say thank you to one of the best friends of this podcast, Nikki. Nikki. Go follow her at Silent Ushi. Thank you for your hard work and endeavoring to help us. And thank you to Dixie for the commentary. Yes. And thank you, Dixie. Anyways, Young Yoda out.